Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest-tossed. No storms can hide that radiance peaceful beaming, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Hi, I'm Jonathan Long with the Ruston Church of Christ. We are just so thankful for you uh, joining us for this uh, study that we're going to pre- dive into in Psalm chapter 130. We are getting in the back half of our Psalms of Ascent is a study we've been looking at. These are Psalms that the Israelite people would meditate on, would reflect on, and would recite as they would go to the temple to worship, as they would make their way up to Jerusalem for their three uh, feast visits. And today we're going to look at Psalm uh, really 130, although we're going to we're going to quietly pass over 129. Uh, it has a little bit to do with what we're talking about today, so we will mention it. But we're going to continue on. We're going to hit Psalm chapter 130. But before we begin, if you would, uh, if you like what we're doing here, if you would just give us a thumbs up, hit that like button, or or maybe comment below. Interaction with our videos is what helps us the most with YouTube's algorithm. So we'd really appreciate it if you do that for us. So. We are in Psalm chapter 130, and it's eight verses, and so we are going to begin just by reading the eight verses. It starts off, it says, Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. And that's the entire psalm. But what I want to do is I want to actually move through this a little bit backwards. Right there at the end, I want to take that for our basis as our outline of what we're going to look at. In verse 7, it says, O Israel, Hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. And I want to look at this in three points. I want to look at the hope that is in the Lord, for the mercy that is with the Lord, and for the redemption that is in the Lord. And the way he lays this out, it almost falls in line with the reverse order of how the chapter goes. This chapter or this psalm is broken down into four sections the one we just read and then three individual sections before it so the first thing i want us to look at is is the redemption from revilers he starts out he says out of the depths i've cried to you lord hear my voice let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications He's crying i say lord hear me as the people are coming to jerusalem as they're coming to worship they're coming there because they want the lord to hear them they, they want to tell the Lord their struggles. They want to tell him about how out of the pit, so which often refers to death or, or Sheol, out of the grave, we feel like we're almost dead. We want you to hear us. And chap, uh, Psalm chapter 129 was all about that. It's a reflection about how the people of this world afflicted and, and, and lashed out at the psalmist and how... He just desires for no one to give comfort or to treat well the people that afflict God's people. And so that's what this first chapter is. God promises redemption, abundant redemption, in verse 7 and in verse 8. And then in verse 1 and 2, we're getting that redemption from, away from, we're being purchased so that we don't have to have that reviling be the ultimate punishment that we receive. The second thing that we see is he says, for, the, for with the Lord there is abundant mercy. There is, uh, excuse me, for with the Lord there is mercy. And for you and I, I want us to look at the next section, verses 3 and 4, about how we do not deserve, this is undeserved mercy that he gives to us. It says, if you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. And 
uh, that first part is, is kind of scary. Lord, if you marked iniquity, if you counted our sin, who could stand? Saying, no one, if Lord, you choose to uphold and, and char- lay charge and account of the sins of man, there's not a man who would stand before you. And the psalmist is absolutely right. That's what it is told us in, in Romans chapter 3 and in Romans chapter 6 that all men sin and fall short of the glory of God and that the punishment for sin is death. Everyone sins and we are all deserving of death. And so if God actually counted uh, sin and if he only had justice and he didn't also love us with mercy, then we wouldn't be able to stand before him. But he says in verse 4, but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. And so the psalmist here is just pouring out, we are undeserving to be able to come before God, to stand before him because of our sin. But because of the forgiveness of God, we can come before him. We can stand in front of him. We can receive the glory and the hope of the presence of God. And then the last thing in verses 5 and 6, it is the hope that we find in the Lord. In verse 7 it says, O Israel, hope in the Lord is the charge that he gives to the nation. And he says this in verse 5, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. He's all about hoping. He's saying my soul is waiting and I am hoping in the Lord. But he says that in his word that that he hopes. And, and for you and I, if we're going to, if we want to be, followers of Christ. We ought to be finding hope from the Word of God. And and four things that we can find hope in. The first thing is when we look in God's Word, we're reminded about what God has done for His people. Our Wednesday night studies here at at Ruston, we've been studying Joshua. And all throughout the book of Joshua, God is calling them to remember what I did for you when I brought you out of the land of Egypt and how I provided for you in the wilderness and how I conquered the cities before you on the eastern side of the river. And then once we cross in the river, remember how the Lord was with you and defeated your enemies in front of you. And it's all about, through God's word, There's it's a story all about how God goes before and fights battles for his people. Psalm chapter 119 verse 90 says, Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth and it stands fast. God's faithfulness, God's promise to take care of his people and his pattern for taking care of his people. We read about that. We gain a hope from the fact that we are God's people and he always takes care of his people when they're faithful to him. We also read in his word what he did through his son. That's what the story of the first four books of the Bible are all about is what Jesus Christ did. But in 2 Corinthians chapter chapter 5, verse 21, uh, there's this description that's made about how Christ took on our sin. It says that he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And so we have a hope of knowing God's word and knowing that Christ redeemed us. He took on the punishment of sin so that we could be saved In God's word, we can have a hope about what Christ is doing now. In Philippians chapter 1, chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, it says that our fellowship is in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. When we were baptized into Christ, we received this Holy Spirit, and that that spirit that began to work in us at that moment will continue to work in us, until the day Jesus Christ comes. We have the confidence that he has sealed us with his spirit, that he has given us that spirit to empower us and to enable us to good works, to ultimately uh, look forward to the salvation that we received through Jesus Christ. And then we have a hope in his word. We, we read about the hope of knowing what God plans to do for us. In Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 24, it's a beautiful section there about the plan for redemption of not only for us, but also for this planet. It says, For we know that the whole creation groans and labors labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly awaiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. 
I know you feel it inside you that this is this can't be all that there is. That even though you might be doing well, you might be financially successful, you might feel fulfilled at work, you might be comfortable in your home, you're having happy marriages and happy families and you're going on nice vacations and everything is going on. Deep inside you, you desire and you crave more. And, and Romans chapter 8 tells us that we have the first fruits of the Spirit. We have within us the Spirit that knows there's more. And we groan within ourselves and we eagerly await the being adopted into the family of God fully and receiving the redemption, the renewal of our body so that we can be with Him. It's all about knowing. It, knowing all these things through God's Word gives us the hope to look forward to the Lord for our salvation. He says we even look forward to it even to our soul. And in verse 24 of Romans chapter 8, it says that we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? He's describing there that our putting our faith and our trust, our hope, if you will, in Christ is what saves us. And knowing that God saved us in the past and in the future He's coming to redeem us, to renew us, to reform our bodies, to give us glorious bodies so that we can be with Him. These are all promises that are found in God. I hope this was thought-provoking to you. If you're not a Christian, if, if you haven't been baptized into Jesus Christ in water, not to remove the, the dirt, but to put on Christ by being washed away from your sins from the blood, being saved in that manner like it's described in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. I pray you'd consider it. We'd love to assist you if that's something you're interested in. I'd love to study with you. If you have any questions about what we've been talking about, we look forward to hearing from you. This is going to do it for now. Again, if you like what we're doing, like, subscribe, share, comment. We'd love any interaction at all. But more importantly, if you're in our area, we'd love to worship with you. We'd love to see you in person. Uh, we love people. And we love having a relationship with people, and that's what we long for. That's what we crave for while we're here on this earth until the day that Christ comes to get us again. Thank you so much for joining with us. We'll see you next time.